Hey, Crypto Growth Fam, how's it going? This is your host Shahzeb signing in. We're back with another video, guys. In this video, we will be discussing Flare Network blockchain adoption. It's going to be an interesting one, guys. So make sure to watch till the end. And folks, for those of you who are new to the channel, we primarily discuss utility coins and potential gems. If you're interested in any of that stuff, then subscribe the channel and hit the notification icon for regular videos. And you can also support the channel by becoming a Patreon, so do check that out as well, only if you're interested. And folks, keep your assets safe, and for that, you guys can check out the Crypto Growth exclusive discount offer on Decent. Decent is convenient, safe, and secure. You can check out their products, the Biometric Wallet, which has got $50 off. And you can also check out their Biometric Wallet 2X package, guys, which has got an astonishing $129 off if you follow the link in the description box below. And folks, uh, Decent supports 3,000 plus of your favorite coins and tokens. It supports 50 plus blockchain mainnets. So do check it out. And uh, I personally prefer to store my crypto in a uh, cold hardware wallet. So do check it out. Anyways, guys. Let us now look into the price and chart of uh, Flare and Songbird at the time of the recording, guys. So this is Flare Network. Flare is down 1.96% for the day. The price has uh, dipped from the three cent mark that we talked about was a uh, crucial support. But uh, let's see if this uh, uh, this uh, support is indeed broken or is this a false breakout to the downside leading to up up uh, a bounce towards the upside guys check this out this is the monthly chart the uh, the price has uh, dipped from 0 0.035 basically three and a half cents all the way to 0 0.02781 0 0.028 so uh, guys not only flare the entire market has been red recently aside from a few projects a few coins the entire market has been red and so has been flare it is down 21.45 percent but guys if you look at the early chart over here it is still above this crucial uh, support level of 0 0.02765 even if it goes down 0 0.027 it might dip a little it might do a little false breakout and then come up because this is in my opinion a significant support for the early chart guys because the price uh, as you know in the early it pumped really well all the way to five cents guys from 0 0.008682 so in my opinion a crucial support but if you look at the early chart oh, sorry the all-time chart here we can see as well that there is a crucial support level over here 0 0.02656 as well so still i think that uh, crucial support areas are there but let's see how it goes uh, uh, in the long run and in the short to midterm as well. Because, uh, guys, $1.1 billion market cap is nothing for what Flare is offering. I've told you time and again. As well as Songbird, guys, it has dipped as well. If you look at the monthly chart, but down 25.64. And the yearly chart, same as Flare, basically testing the yearly support over here. All-time chart, guys, if you look at that, then a song word is extremely undervalued, guys. Only $130 million market cap. So, yeah. So, guys, I uh, was checking out the Flare official handle, and I basically came across this really good interview uh, with Hugo Fillion. Check this out. Hugo Fillion's latest interview with Defiant News at Ethereum Denver. Flare time series oracles versus traditional oracles. Data unlocks wider blockchain adoption. All leverages blockchain. Obviously, data is the new oil. It unlocks everything. So this is an interview. It is 20 minutes long, guys. So you have to check it out yourselves. It is a, a long interview, but let us just uh, check the, out the bits and pieces of it. But do check it out, guys, uh, in its full length. So tell us about your experience at ETH Denver. Is this your first time here? Have you been here before? Uh, it's my first time at ETH Denver. I, I was meant to come two years ago, but I got COVID, uh, which was a shame. So it's uh, amazing to experience it. It's sort of unlike any of the other uh, Ethereum events I've been to. You have into ETH CC and those kind of things, but this is... Yeah, I've also heard about ETH, ETH uh, Denver, guys, that it is a good event. So, yeah is much more or it appears to be much more much more focused on builders um, and people actually building you know the actual core protocols and uh, dApps and things like that so that's why we wanted to be here we're we're very um, sort of builder focused 
um, much less investment focused. Uh, things like you know, ETHCC is a very good proxy for ETH Denver um, in, in Europe, but I think, uh, again, has a very different flavor. Um, so yeah, what, what uh, from your perspective, uh, would be the top three crypto narratives that are um, emerging as key themes in 2024? big drivers of this kind of bull run? Uh, so, I mean, the, the top three narratives are, are very simple, really. I mean, it's definitely ZK, it's definitely restaking, and I would argue the third one that is sort of relatively new, but probably going to be absolutely massive is AI. Uh, I would like uh, to add one, uh, yet another one, guys, the real world asset tokenization. Tokenization is going to be huge as well, obviously. Uh, even BlackRock and so many different uh, organizations interested in it, institutions. A physicist, uh, so working on quantum computing and working on uh, quantum AI algorithms. Uh, so we've been working together, um, uh, principally Dr. Nairi and some of our researchers. Uh, yeah, I want to... Unison. Sound doctor? Yo, sound doctor. That shit fire, bro. Let's go. Melodies, psych draw a few of these things so you've got um, integrated um, the, the, the data layer so you've got the data the blockchain the the AI models more accurate less bias what is the data the data part can you talk a little bit more about how you as an organization is using data and the blockchain? Uh, absolutely. So data and our data and AI things are slightly different, although they are related. Um, the data aspect is essentially we're a blockchain that gives you three types of data. Time series data, like price data. Um, Web2 proofs, so proofs of something that happened you know, from a, a non-blockchain API, and proofs of something that happened on a blockchain. Um, so this then allows you to build really quite uh, an extensive list of things. Um, that you're, we're, you know, for instance, we're building uh, two bridges uh, with, with that. We're also building a, a relay of our data. Uh, and the relay, in fact, is part of the data protocol. Uh, so we, we can prove data on Flare, and then we're going to relay it to other chains, so to act as an oracle, but a highly decentralized oracle. The decentralization of it is important because if you're relying on uh, something that is less decentralized, you're taking a huge amount of risk, um, essentially, with, with, with not, you know, if you're a, uh, an ecosystem group that is part of a blockchain, uh, you know, and you take on a centralized oracle, uh, you're taking a lot of risk of development of your project. The same if you're an application founder and the same if you're a user and you're, and you're putting money into those protocols. So uh, we think that by making uh, oracles or data substantially more decentralized, having you know, stake behind them so that there's serious losses if, if, if there's maliciousness or just uh, uh, you know, bad data, uh, this makes people take it a lot more seriously. This is not necessarily true of you know, earlier oracles. In how yeah, yeah, this is. Uh, he's right that uh, decentralized oracles are the future, and uh, the, the the nodes providers and the ones that are basically providing that data, they need to be punished and they need to be rewarded accordingly to provide good data. Obviously, guys, a lot is at stake. A lot is at stake when organizations get involved, when institutions get involved. So this is cool. How, how are the incentives? Um, how are you trying the incentives to? There's they're not doing anything on chain until they publish the price. Yeah, like right? I told you guys, nodes getting involved and all of that stuff, guys. So rewarding them and incentivizing them as well as punishing them. For the last couple of days and everyone's talking about the price. But everyone's also saying that none of their normie friends are calling them and talking about the price, which is interesting. Uh, which means that uh, I think an awful lot of people have an expectation that the price is going to go a lot further. Um, I don't think that price is the only thing that leads. I think there's a mischaracterization in our industry that if we just get really, really, you know, uh, pumpy, that people will jump in. I, I don't think that's necessarily the desirable way to do it because it's every time we've done that is ended in a crash. So I think, you know, efforts like the Ethereum scaling, that should lead to mass adoption because it can bring the price of doing things down. Uh, and then it also makes it substantially faster so that you know, the faster something is, uh, the more valuable a use case built on it can be. Because you know, really what we're comparing 
our blockchains to is uh, our, our applications on phones, right? That's basically everyone's experience of inter interacting with the internet. So it's got to be able to be as scalable or coming as close as possible to you know using an, an ordinary application. And then of course you have to have um, you know the the front ends that make it. like you obviously have to educate. We can't. Uh, you know, deny it is that absolutely KYC and AML, you know, in a in a decentralized way, so that you know, you, you we we don't really want censorship, right? But the, the whole industry is about trying to avoid censorship. Um, exactly, guys. The future is all about bridging the gap between traditional finance and decentralized finance, and the blockchain adoption is going to be happening when institutions. Uh, that want a lot of uh, data, a lot of your private data, you, you how you manage them as well as how you remain uh, decentralized at the same time. That is the bridge, guys. That is the answer to a lot of questions. Uh, KYC, but in a way that uh, your private data remains intact. Uh, there are a lot of people uh, projects that are doing this, like Nexera ID. We've talked about Nexera as well that basically uh, your data remains anonymous as well as the institutions get that yeah uh, he com uh, complies and abides by what we are, uh, abides by our requirement so that it's sort of bridge guys but if you can do kyc and aml uh, and you know sure at the application level it's absolutely possible that people may build an application that says if you're on the ofac list uh, you cannot use this application other people are free to build applications that do and that application may or may not be successful um, but where feasible where sensible KYC and AML is incredibly important um, you know we we've been thinking a lot about how we integrate it into the things we do um, I mean part of the reason for building a blockchain for data is to be able to do decentralized identity and things like KYC and AML you know uh, sort of within the blockchain itself so uh, I mean that's I suppose that's the limit of my thoughts on regulation. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, one of the but obviously re regulation is here and a lot of things will have to rely on being regulated, being compliant in the, uh, in the future adoption phase of crypto. So uh, what do you guys think about Flare being that uh, one of the front runners in this race for blockchain adoption? I would like your opinions in the comment box below. Anyways, guys, this was it for the video. If you liked it, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification icon uh, for regular videos. And you can also support the channel by becoming a Patreon, so do check that out. Like I always say in the end, until next time, stay blessed and stay tuned. Thank you very much, everyone.